I come from immigrant parents. They came here when I was two years old. I want to talk to people today about how if they want to help other people that are also dreamers and have immigrant families, they shouldn't vote for Trump again. What has been your biggest highlight at the door so far? Lucha started in 2010 when SB 1070 happened, a bill that gave permission to racially profile the Latinx community. That you can stop any person to ask them for their papers. And the type of people that you're looking for in the descriptors are cars that have Virgin Marys hanging from the dashboard. So it was very, um, clear discrimination descriptors in that law um, that was permissible and it was voted in by the legislature in 2010. So similar to the situation in California where you all had 187, in Arizona we had massive events happen that galvanized Latino turnout. First was Joe Arpaio, years and years of civil rights violations. Senate Bill 1070 happened and that was the show me your papers bill uh, here in Arizona and nothing uh, codified discrimination and racism like SB 1070. And so if they've already voted mailed in their ballot that you're just going to ask them, oh, would you like a side in your yard to... In California, what we saw was the Latino community take that moment of fear and pain and organize and build power. Sheriff Arpaio at the time would go and follow our communities and stop them. There were checkpoints at regular intersections to ask people for their papers. As we continued to organize, that fear began to dissipate. And in Arizona, we were able to take that fear and that pain, and we did not stop organizing. We have to keep living our lives like normal. I go to school and we have to keep living like nothing's going on, but still with that fear of like, maybe one day we can be deported. During this pandemic, of course, it was a question mark about whether or not we could do such an operation. Okay, el lunes. Voy el lunes. Okay, perfecto. So we worked with an epidemiologist to figure out how it was that we could go door to door safely. We hit about 20,000 doors a day. During COVID, we find about 30% of the people home, give or take about 5,000 conversations a day. When I came out and they told me I had to go on knocking on strangers' doors, I was, there is no way I'm going to do this. After a few weeks, I started enjoying it because it was informing a lot of people, people like me, people of color that believe that they don't have a voice into believing in themselves and getting out to vote and mobilizing this vote. Para saber que usted si mandó su voto, puedo... Our overall goal was to hit 800,000 doors. So far, we've hit about 550,000 already. And we anticipated getting about 125 to 135,000 yeses for Biden-Harris and for the U.S. Senate candidate Mark Kelly. Um, and so we are on, you know, on target to hit those goals. When I think about some of the barriers that exist, there's voter suppression, there's access to voter education. The electoral process is a very, very complex system, so trying to educate an elder about what that is, it's such a foreign framework, you've got to really take your time teaching. At the federal level, there should be liaisons for every single tribe across the United States that represent the tribes to let the government know what is truly happening, what works and what does not work. Arizona essentially is split into thirds. One third Democratic, one third Republican, one third Independent. The formula used to be run up the score in Pima County, try not to lose Maricopa by too much, and hope to split the rural vote. A lot of Democrats are winning Maricopa County now, which is something that 10 years ago, six years ago, was unheard of. The African-American vote is critical, particularly for Democrats to win. Native votes, particularly down in Southern Arizona and in Northern Arizona and in Eastern Arizona with the Navajo, Apache, Hopi. We have probably more Native Americans in one state than any other state. Each tribe has a con contribution to the United States. A lot of people don't see that because they only see us as, as, 
as a primitive people. For every president we've ever had, we've had to explain sovereignty and understand that we are important to this society. The way we made people listen to us and become educated ourselves. Bill Clinton was in office. He established a Native American desk in the White House. And so I see that coming back with President Biden. He has a soft spot for just about everybody and he's very, very uh, open to the tribal communities and their needs. For me right now with the pandemic, really it's just getting the help to all of the elders because right now it's really easy for them to get sick. So they'll need either their kids or their grandkids' help. Up north in Navajo right now, it's, it's pretty hard for them with winter coming. So really everything is just um, depending on your family. COVID did hit us hard for a couple months and we've lost, I believe, a total of 41 individuals. It did touch all of us. And, you know, the way we gather and support each other, we weren't able to do that. And I think that's something that we still need to deal with emotionally and spiritually uh, once all this is settled. I think the downplay of the, the virus from the beginning did impact how we responded to it. You know, we didn't know how it was going to impact us and what we have to do in order to overcome it. I am a born and raised Arizona, registered as a Republican as soon as I turned 18. And we all know Donald Trump threw everything into chaos. What's been most disappointing for me is the reaction of the rest of the party to what he's done. They all fell in line and, and he's got huge support still from members of the Republican Party and I just didn't even want to be associated with that anymore. There are a number of people who are hoping to go back to the Republican Party one day. I, I don't think I'll be among them. All the lies and all the conspiracy theories that have been actively promoted and encouraged and accepted by, by huge swaths of the Republican Party is never going away. Their entire purpose now is just to oppose the Democrats and, and left-leaning folks instead of being in favor of, of anything coherent. Well, the reality is Arizona is diverse in terms of uh, racial makeup, in terms of socioeconomic status, with regards to where people actually come from in order to live here in Arizona. Our Voice Our Vote Arizona is part of a coalition called My Arizona, and we work with Living United for Change, Unite Here, Mi Familia Bota, and also Chispa Arizona. So we've been able to knock on nearly two million doors in just one electoral cycle to change the dynamics here of Arizona. No matter if you're black, white, brown, or native, we all have commonalities around policy issues. Strong education systems, making sure that we have a strong healthcare system, fighting for wage equality, and making sure that people have the ability uh, to truly be who they are and not fear racism uh, in, their, in their workplace or in daily life. The passion is because they see these real world problems every single day. The second they step out uh, to go to school or the second they step out to go to the grocery store, they want to push for a better neighborhood. They want to push for a better movement within Arizona. These kids, they know how important this election is to them and they know how important it is for their future. So now you see a new generation, the generation that was active in fighting against SB 1070 are now the voters, but they're also the, their leading organizations. And we're hopeful we'll be able to continue increasing the minimum wage that will provide paid family leave for everyone. So we're actually looking at policies that will enhance the quality of life for our families. Every cycle, Latinos as a share of the electorate has increased. And not only do they represent a larger share of the electorate, but they're representing uh, a larger share than ever of those who are actually voting. So we're confident that 30% of the total vote will be from Latinx community. This year, Arizona, there is no pathway to winning and Arizona flipping without the Latinx vote. The demographic has absolutely changed here, but that does not mean that people vote. And so it's critical that we stay in the street. We already have the experience that the demographics, it's really helpful to change, but people don't vote unless you speak to them. I want my kids to have their own family and to feel free that they belong here. I want some leaders that will care for us, the people, and not corporations. I want health insurance for everyone. 
I'm still struggling in, in believing that I, I'm a leader, but, but yes, I guess I am. <laughs>